Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. We, we thank you for the opportunity to, to worship you and to magnify your name, to glorify your name. Uh, and we pray, Lord God, that these, these next few moments as we simply gather around your word and as we share your word together, I pray, Lord God, that you will speak to us, that our hearts will be open and that we will hear your word into our very uh, lives, we pray. We pray that we will be transformed by your word this morning as it begins to change us and so that we become more and more like you. We pray for our family and friends today, many again who are away from us. We pray, Lord God, that you'll be with them, that you will bless them, that you will encourage them, and that you will give you more of your grace and mercy and peace. We ask in your precious name, Lord God. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we continue with our series of uh, foundations, this series that we've uh, previously talked about as being our, our DNA about who we are. And so this foundational series we are going to cover for four weeks. We, uh, we started uh, last week as we looked at our cornerstone, our cornerstone foundation, which is Jesus Christ. And actually, everything that we do here at Metro Christian Center, Berry, and at our church in Whitefield is based on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. It's about who he is. And everything that we do here as a church, as a family, whatever we do in our congregation here, whatever we do in our activities together, it is on the cornerstone and on the chief foundation of Jesus Christ. Everything we do is built around that. And so in our foundation, first and foremost, that we are committed to Christ Jesus. But also, as part of our foundation here, we are also committed to change. We don't like change, do we? Many of us really struggle with change, and yet change is inevitable and it is vital. We, we love our routine. We love our routine of doing certain things. We love our ways. I had the opportunity uh, yesterday to spend some time with my mum and dad, and we went to their caravan, and at their caravan where they have a beautiful time, we had a wonderful time together, they have their ways. You know, like 11s is, is 11s is. And if it's gone past 11s is, well, what's happened in life? It's suddenly changed, something's transformed, something has altered that we're not quite used to. And for many of you, you will have your tea at a certain time and we'll be tired, your tea time has changed. And for some of you this morning, you mentioned this morning even, I've had to sit in a different place this morning. Somebody's taken my seat. I normally sit over there and I've had to move. I've had to go and sit somewhere else. We don't like change. And if we go to the supermarket and they've moved things, oh my goodness. Any of you complain to the manager about that? I, I, I was surprised, but my mum shouts, yes. Uh, we don't like change. We like the routine of life. We like the things to go the same way it's always been. And actually, the longer we do something or we go somewhere, often we become more and more settled because it becomes familiar to us and we like those things. So many of you will come here and you will sit in the same seats that you sit in every week. You will because it's familiar and you don't like change. And if somebody sits in your seat, well, it changes everything. But you need to know that as followers of Jesus Christ, as part of our foundation here at Metro Christian Centre, Berry and at Whitefield, that we as a church are committed to change. Recognising that we cannot stay the way we are. That we cannot just keep doing the things that we do simply because that's what we've always done. And you need to know that as a church, it's not about being open to change. It's about being committed to change. Because change, we must. In Psalm 51, and we're going to read it together in a moment, in Psalm 51, David cries out to God. Following his adultery with Bathsheba and his order for Bathsheba's husband to be put to death, his cry to God has already been mentioned this morning. Is God create within him a clean heart and renew a loyal spirit within him. If you've got a Bible, turn to Psalm 51 as we read that together. Psalm 51, and reading from verse 7. David 
David writes these words. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice or an offer one. You don't want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. It's a very familiar psalm if you've been brought up in church. It's a psalm that's already been referred to this morning. It's a psalm that many of us will be aware of and very familiar with. And it's perhaps a psalm that many of us have prayed in our lives. This psalm of David where he cries out to God, Create in me a clean heart and renew a loyal spirit within me. For God to create and for God to renew. We're perhaps very familiar with the creation of a clean heart element. That those of us who have become followers of Jesus Christ, that we are aware of our sin, we're aware of our shame, we're aware of our nakedness. And in, in God, through His mercy and through His Son, Jesus Christ, as we cry out to Him for forgiveness, well, He clothes us with robes of righteousness and He creates within us a clean heart. Or as the Bible puts it, the New Testament puts it, to be born again. A freshness, a newness, that this old life has gone and there's a fresh life, a new life, a new heart. And perhaps for many of us who are Christians, we are familiar with this creation of a new heart within us. But then sometimes we forget about what it means to renew a loyal spirit within us. The Hebrew word used here for this renewal is kardash. Kardash, not car as in brum car. Kardash, okay? Kardash, and it means to renew or to repair or to rebuild. You see, it's one thing to make something new and create something new. It's different to renew something and to repair something and to rebuild on something. In other words, David's cry isn't just a cry of create within him a clean heart, but also it's a cry to repair him, to rebuild him, to renew him. In other words, it's a cry to God to say, God, keep changing me. Keep changing me. Keep building on my life and knock down the stuff in my life that isn't of you. Keep repairing in me, God, because God, I mess up. I do stupid things. I do things that are against your will and I ask you to repair in me, God. Oh God, keep renewing in me. Keep changing within me a spirit that is loyal to you so that I don't want to do the things that are disloyal to you. Isn't that a cry of Paul in the New Testament? Why is it I do the wrong things when I want to do the right things? His cry, he's saying, renew in me a loyal spirit. In other words, keep changing me, God. And a true follower of Jesus Christ is a follower who is committed to change, committed to being rebuilt, committed to be molded, to be renewed into something new. To be changed, you have to be committed to change. To be changed, we have to be committed to change. I don't want to shock you this morning, but none of you are perfect. None of you, including me, are perfect. And, and actually, we can quickly fall back into the ways that actually don't please God. 
We can quickly fall back to our selfish ways. We can quickly ignore God in our lives. You only need to look at the Bible and see how this happens very clearly. And many of us will read these scriptures and we will laugh at perhaps their ignorance. And we will laugh at perhaps the ways that they fall away so quickly. But actually they do so because we do so. You can look at the Israelites that when they're freed from slavery, it's not long that they're quickly asking to go back. Free from slavery, and then all of a sudden, well, we, we don't like this food you're providing for us, God. It, it was so much better when we were in chains and we were eating food, real food. So quickly they forget about what God has done for them, and then all of a sudden they want to go back. Or perhaps, as we've just journeyed through the Easter season, how many of us recognize the fact that the crowds cry out to Jesus as he enters into Jerusalem, Hosanna. And then it's not long before they're crying out, crucify him. Hosanna. Crucify him. Freedom. Slavery. And the disciples themselves, how quick did they turn and run? In a statement from Peter to say, I will never leave you. Even if I have to die, I'll die alongside you. And the rest of the disciples join in and say, we'll do the same. And yet when it comes to it, they run and they flee. Or if you move on right through to the end of the Bible in Revelation, it's quite quick that the church has quickly lost its love for God and love for his people. And how quickly the church is described as being lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. And so once more, we turn to gossip and to curse. And we turn to criticize and to grumble. And we turn to being bitter and to be angry. And we turn to being selfish and hurtful. And we need to cry out to God like David cried out, Renew a loyal spirit within me. Keep building on me, God. Keep renewing me, God. Keep changing me, God. This cry is from David. It, it's, it's not something that's a forced statement of David to belong to God. This is a voluntary cry from David to ask God to renew a loyal spirit within him. It's David's recognition that he's got to continue to change. And actually that he wants to change. And that he needs to be committed to change. Do you know what? No one can force you to change. No one can actually force you to change. You need to be committed to change. And church, to be born again is one thing, but to grow in your faith is to change. We're not meant to be spiritual babies. We are meant to grow. We are meant to change. Paul writes some harsh words to the church in Corinth. A church that is a great church, but with some big problems. And Paul writes these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk as though you belonged to this world, as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger, and you still aren't ready. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You're jealous of one another and you quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove that you're controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like the people of the world? For some of us, when we have cried out to God creating us a clean heart, we've remained spiritual babies. The clean heart for you has been enough. The cry for renewed loyal spirit hasn't actually been uttered from your lips. It's not something you've declared from your heart or displayed in your actions. We, as Paul puts it, continue to be jealous with one another and we continue to quarrel with one another. In other words, not changing at all. And Paul says, grow up. Grow up, church. Grow up. In other words, you need to change. Paul goes on to write in the same chapter. 
For we are both God's workers, and you are God's field, you are God's building. And because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but, be, uh, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. Yes, our foundation is Christ Jesus, but it is also foundational for us that we are to continue to be built on, that we are continue to be changed, that we are continue to be renewed in Christ Jesus. To be committed to change is to be renewed over and over again. It's to be molded, it's to be shaped, it's to be changed so that we become more like him. And we all need to. Every single one of us, no matter how long you've been on this journey of faith, or else if we don't change, we become static, we become stagnant, and we become dead in our religious ways. To be a follower of Jesus Christ, yes, is to have a clean heart, but also it's a cry to have a renewed, loyal spirit within us, to continue to be challenged and to continue to be changed until that glorious and wonderful day of Christ's return when he says he'll renew all things. He will change all things. This baptism this morning that we're going to do together, it isn't the end. I'm not going to keep you down there that long. It isn't the end. It's the symbol of a created clean heart within you. But it's a declaration that you are going to continue to change. That you are going to continue to walk in his way and not your way. That it's a declaration this morning that you're going to continue to walk with Christ Jesus for the remainder of your days. I'm reminded of a story in Acts chapter 8, where Philip encounters the Ethiopian eunuch. Here's this man of importance, a treasurer of Ethiopia, and a eunuch. If you didn't know what a eunuch is, well, it's a man who's been castrated. It's a man who's had, well, things removed from him, either through choice or as a result of slavery, or in actual fact, it may be in service to his queen. But actually, this moment you read about in Acts chapter 8 changes everything for this Ethiopian eunuch who reads the Scripture, who has Philip explain the Scripture to him, and then he longs to be baptized. This Ethiopian eunuch who has power and authority, his life is now in submission to the one who has all power and all authority, and his life now is completely transformed. When he gets up out of that water and goes on his way, he has to go back to work. He has to go back to Ethiopia. But I guarantee you this, his life has changed forever, and his life will continue to change forever. When you come up out of these waters this morning, you need to know that you've already made a declaration of faith in Christ Jesus. But actually, this declaration this morning is also that you will continue to change. Change is uncomfortable. Change is undesirable. And yet it must happen. For many of us, we've already been Baptized, we've already gone through these waters, but we've perhaps forgotten that we still need to change, that we still need to become more and more like the Savior that we follow. If we claim to have Christ as our foundational cornerstone, then we need to also be committed to change. For without change, We'll never represent Christ well. And church, here at Metro Christian Centre Bury, we are committed to change. Because it is in our commitment to change that through Jesus Christ, we believe that we can also change the course of humanity. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we recognize this morning that actually not only do you long to create within us a clean heart, but also you want to renew a loyal spirit within us. And there may be, may be people this morning who haven't even called out to God for a clean heart. And that moment is for you now. That you can make that declaration right now in your heart, where you are. Say, God, I, I don't get all this stuff. But I recognize that my life is a little bit of a mess. And I need a fresh start, a new beginning. I, I perhaps need to be born again. That I need creating within me a clean heart. And that's a simple cry from you where you are right now this morning. But for the rest of us, there's, there's many who've already called out for that. But we've forgotten to call out to God for a renewed spirit within us. A loyal spirit that is loyal to you. That, that actually we continue to be challenged and changed by you and by your word. And, and so we've settled for just a clean heart. When actually, Lord God, you demand more. And so may it be said of us all here that our cry is a renewal of a loyal spirit within us. We ask in your precious name, Lord God. Amen.